this computer. All right, welcome to module 12. We are almost finished with all of the algebra stuff that we're doing this year. Big congratulations to all of you for that. Uh, the last little thing that we're going to do here is called sequences. It is a very short unit. Um, sequences is a fancy way of saying patterns. So this should be, uh, this should come pretty easily to everybody. Um, so reminder, please make sure that you have your guided notes up as you are doing this video with us. I'm going to screen share in just a moment. Um, if you have not been doing your homework in Math Excel, make sure that you go back and do that because you got to do your homework, man. Uh, and why are you thumbing down homework, Daniel? No, I mean that people you? didn't do the homework. That's some found. Oh, it makes it makes me feel like you're saying thumbs down to homework, and we no, definitely no. need to do homework if you want to get No, trained. to people that, who didn't do the homework. Okay, well, yeah, nice job trying to save yourself on that one. Okay, so yeah, uh, <laughs> um, yeah so make sure uh, the assignment calendar it includes all of the Canvas assignments, right? We have some Canvas assignments and we have some Math Excel assignments. Uh, we really only have one more test, and it's a sequences test. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, I have with me today, Mr. Daniel Martinez. What's up, Daniel? Hi. Uh, nothing much. Nothing homework. And we have, uh, back by popular demand, we have Kristen Alvey. What's going on, Kristen? Nothing much. Yeah, I was I was talking to them about the most exciting things that happened. Um, do either of you want to share the most exciting thing? They both said the same thing, by the way. Um, sure. Um, I'll do it then. Um, not having that much work for Dr. Scott. That is pretty exciting stuff, right? I know. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share a screen here and we'll get cracking on this. You guys can see that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so yes. um, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna jump through this pretty quickly. We're not gonna do all of this work because I think you, um, most everybody at home, you guys get the gist of what we're doing. So we're gonna do a couple of these patterns and then we'll, we'll just kind of skip ahead just a heads up there. So, um, when we're talking about sequences, like I said, we're, we're just looking at patterns. That's all this is. So if I'm looking at the very first one, number one here, uh, what would the next three numbers be in this sequence? 30, 35, and 40. All right, how'd you know that? Because it's going up by five every time. 35 and 40. All right, so the rule is like plus five. Right. All right. So, how about the next one, Daniel? Wait. Wait. wait number one, he said. I think it's going by ten. Like, it's gonna be like thirty-five. Oh, what do you think about that? Oh. Yeah. All right. Can I change this? Come on, man. What's going on here? All right. So we're gonna change this. Thanks, Daniel. Wow. It's not. Oh, there it goes. All right. So we're going to change this plus five to plus 10. Are we okay with that? Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. So we got 35, 45, 55. All right. So we got plus 10 is the rule, right? Yeah. All right. So um, Daniel, how about the next one? Number two. I think it's minus seven. So it's going to be a negative seven, negative 14. All right. We're just going to minus seven each time. Yes. Basically. Minus 21. Rule is minus seven. All right, let's do one more, Kristen. What's it gonna be? Um, it's like might not be addition. It's not. It's like multiplying every time, but I don't know by what. All right. Well, I know six times two is twelve, and twelve times two is twenty-four, right? Yeah. But then it's also doing what? It's becoming positive and then going back to negative. Right. So if I did like negative six times negative two, yeah. that could be positive as well, right? So my rule here is times negative two, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All right. So then like 48 yeah. times negative two, that'd be what? Negative 96? Yeah, negative 96. And then, oof. All right. What's the next one? 180, 192, maybe. And then whatever 192 times negative two is, 
what's that going to be? 384. I'm guessing. I don't know. I'm trying to do mental math here. All right. So um, that's it. That's that's the idea behind sequences. Okay. So um, simple concept here is like you're looking for the pattern. A sequence is another way of saying a pattern or a rule that you can apply in a situation. Okay. Now the thing with you know since this is algebra, we have to obviously make it more complicated than that, right? So um, we're not just going to say the rule is plus ten. We're going to say like some number plus 10, right? Because if I started on any number, then I could apply the same rule, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of yeah. where we're going when we do sequences here, okay? So let's go ahead and skip down to the next page. Take a couple of notes here, and then we'll do another little practice, okay? So uh, on the second page, we got a sequence is a list of numbers. Excuse my really messy handwriting. See oh my gosh that is so bad i just need to undo it maybe i should actually type this all right so a sequence yes i did that on purpose there we go and this um each element in a sequence is called a term okay when I say element, I sort of mean like there's like a position and then there's a term, right? So like we've got a position down here. In the first position, the term or the element would be nine. In the second position, the term would be 11. See that? Yes. All right, so go ahead and um, tell me Kristen, what's going to go across the top row here? If you're looking at this table and I ask you to fill it all in. It would just be like one, two, three, four. It just, just yeah. listing. Because they're just in order, right? Yeah. All right, so Daniel gets the hard stuff. All right, so yeah. missing the fourth term here. So Daniel, what's going to be the fourth term here? So it's plus two, so it's I'm 15. Yeah. So first you found the rule, right? You found the rule in yeah. the sequence, which is plus two, which you nailed. So then that makes this 15 and then 17. Then 19, mm -hmm. 21 and 23. All right. All right. So let's use our noggins here. If I, if I looked at part B here and I asked you, what is F? of one now we're going back to like functions all of a sudden right look how this whole this whole year just came full circle yeah so if i'm looking for f of one what number do you think represents f of one nine why do you say nine because it's because the, the chart mm -hmm. all right so when my function is in the first position, the term that I get out of that is a nine. That's it, okay? Man, whoever, guy, whoever taught you guys functions, they really knew what they were talking about, man. I gotta remind me to thank that person when I see them. Yeah, All they right. did actually. All right, so then what's f of four gonna be? 15. Yep, same idea, right? I got four right here. This is the fourth position. So whatever term is in the fourth position, right? Like what this is telling me is fourth position. I'm not even gonna try. All right, I can't, I can't do this. <laughs> it's too hard to like write here. All right, so F of eight is going to be? 23. 23. Yeah. 23, ooh. All right, so this is a good time to remind you guys that all of the completed guided notes that actually look good can also be found in Canvas. Um, I usually post the guided notes um, the day of the activity on the assignment calendar. So if you want to do them a little earlier, that's fine. But I'm going to I'm going to release the the completed guided notes the day of that activity. All right, uh, two more. Okay, we're going to kind of flip it here. What position number is going to get me thirteen? Three. Yep. And what position number is going to give me 21? Seven. Seven, okay. 
All right, so um, domain. Okay, so the domain here represents like the inputs or the X values, okay? Um, yeah. Input or in this case, the position. All right, so let's see here. Um, I just mentioned that like sequences and functions are very closely related. So um, the thing about sequences and functions here is that each term is associated with a position number. Each term or X value like input is associated with a position number. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. A term is actually the output. Messed that up. Each output is associated with an input or position number. Okay, so since each position number is associated with exactly one term, sequences are functions, okay? Like I put in, I put in some number and I get out a result, okay? For each one thing I put in, I get one thing out. So sequences are functions. And like I said, the domain of the sequence, that would be like the N or the position. And the range is like the um, term value. Right, like in the first position, I got a nine out. So domain would be first, range would be nine. Question so far? No. Okay, a couple more like vocab things here. Um, we're gonna start talking over the next couple of days about continuous versus discrete functions again. Remember what a continuous function is? Anybody, anybody? All right, so a continuous function is like an ongoing, ongoing set of numbers, right? There's like things that go in between them. Um, an example of a continuous function would be like height, right? If I'm like measuring the height of um, my daughter, I could say that she's like, 44 inches, I could say that she's 45 inches, I could say that she's 44 and a half inches, 44 and a quarter, right? I could get, I could like keep slicing it over and over and over again, okay? And then discrete functions are the opposite. Discrete functions are specific. Right, like if I said my daughter is six years old, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep slicing that down and be like I'm six and three days and 22 hours and 49 minutes. Right, I'm just gonna be like I'm six. Okay, just like that. Okay, so um, there are two different types of sequences. Okay, um, the first type of sequence, the one that you guys are probably most familiar with, it's called explicit sequences or explicit rules. And explicit rules define, sorry, I'm just, uh, yeah. So explicit rules define the nth term, like any number, as a function of n. the nth term as a function of n, okay? Now that sounds weird, but what that means is, like if I gave you this first example, the sequence, this should be n squared, by the way, n squared. So if I told you that my sequence was f of n is equal to n squared plus one, okay? And I told you that the first term or the n of one in the sequence 
um, what would f of n be if I know that n is 1? Two. How do you know it's two? Because uh, one to this, um, the squared is one plus one is two. Yeah, one squared plus one is equal to two. So f of n is going to be two. Okay, literally you're just plugging in whatever your n is. You do whatever it says in the in the little sequence, and then you go. Right, that's it. Okay, so if n is two. Kristen, what does that make f of n? Four. Because no, why? Oh, because um, when you put the two in as n, it's squared to be four. Okay, but the whole remember that the whole rule is n yeah, squared then, plus one. Plus one, so then it would be five. So that'd be you got five. it. Yeah, there you go. Yep. All right, so then if n is 3, Daniel, back to you. What? What was the question, sorry? If n is 3. 3, um, 10. Mm -hmm. Right, so again, we're just like building the sequence as we go, right? And then f of 4, so in the fourth position, Kristen, back to you. Um, it would be 17, mm -hmm. right? Yep, because 4 squared is 16 plus 1 more is 17. Great, so if I were to actually like write the sequence out, it would be 2, 5, 10, 17, so on and so forth. Okay, now the reason that we use these like sort of sequences is that like, great, we've got this pattern, right? Um, and, you know, we could call it n squared, we call it x squared, you could call it whatever you want, right? But, um, you know, if, if we, if we want to skip ahead, we could find the 20th term without having to, like, count over and over and over again. We could just, like, put in 20, figure out what the answer is, right? So if I, if I want the 20th term, instead of n squared, I'm going to put 20 squared. 20 squared is, I think, 400, is that right? Um, yes. Yeah, so we got 400 plus one more is 401. So that, um, you know, this is kind of tying in stuff that we've already been doing in algebra, right? Um, we're just calling it something a little different now. Sometimes we just call it an equation, sometimes we call it a sequence. Either way, you get a rule, you plug in a number to the rule, okay? Oh man, I totally forgot to say what this lesson was brought to you by. I'm like too excited about sequences. So I don't know about you guys, but I have Trolls World Tour stuck in my head and I have ever since it came out and I watched it with my, my daughter. So this lesson is brought to you by uh, The Other Side. I don't know if you're familiar with that song, but it's a good one from Trolls World Tour. All right, so we're going to skip. I haven't seen that two. movie. You haven't? Oh my gosh, you gotta no. see it. Really I, cool. I want to see it. Oh, you should. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because it's like, it's a $20 rental, it's crazy. But oh. like, if you went to the theater, you'd probably pay like 20 bucks for one ticket. So, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, like I don't have anything to do, so I, I wanna watch it. Yeah, so convince your parents to spend 20 bucks. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna do one more. If you just skip to the um, the last page here. So we've got sequences, we've got this idea of like, oh, I've got, you know, I can write a rule around it, right? We call that an explicit rule. That's what we know, okay? Now, I've got a little question for you. And Kristen, this question goes to you. Let's say that we've got, um, Let's say that, you know, Daniel and I, we're, we want to beef up, man. You know, like we're stuck in quarantine and we're all about the whole like getting pumped. I want to I wanna get in shape, right? And Daniel's like, yeah, man, I'm going to do this with you, right? This is cool. Like we can be like workout buddies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like get the guns yeah. moving, right? So if we were like, all right, we're going to do, um, do push-ups, 
right? <laughs> you good with that, Daniel? We're going to do some push-ups? Yes. And our goal is going to be to increase the number of push-ups that we can do by five every single day. Okay. Right? That's good. So, yeah, man. So, like, by the end of this quarantine, man, we're going to be, like, ripped. We're going to be doing, like, 100 push-ups or something, right? Because we're going to be, like, increasing it by five every day. Okay? So, if my – our general rule here for this sequence is going to be plus five push-ups, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Um, you know, I'm not as strong as Daniel is right now. So it's possible that like, you know, if we are, we could just say that our rule is like N plus five, right? But Daniel can start with more pushups than I can. Cause he's like, he's, he's already ripped. I mean, look at this guy, he's ripped, right? So <laughs> what, ha what would happen if like we wanted to do a rule, but like we had a different starting number? Like, do you think it's fair, Kristen, if, like, Daniel's like, well, I can already do, like, 25 push-ups, so uh, tomorrow we're doing 30, and I'm like, yo, I can't, uh, I'm not there yet, right? Um, it's not really fair, because, like, you'd have to grow a lot more than Daniel would have, so you guys would have to start out with two different numbers. Exactly. And so, when we have recursive rules, that's for situations where, like, you're applying the same rule, but you're starting it at two different points. That's the reason that we have recursive rules, okay? So um, I'll get back to our, our push-ups in just a second, but it says here a recursive rule for a sequence defines the nth term, so like no matter what position we're in, we're not defining it by like just plugging in some random number. We're actually defining it by one or more previous terms. V, oh my gosh, all right. We're going to define it by the previous terms. This to be a text box. Previous terms, yes. Okay, because like you were saying, like my wimpy muscles, they have to grow more than Daniel's do, right? So like it's not fair if we're not starting, you know, we, we would want to start at different numbers or previous terms and add five to that, right? So Daniel's he can he can already do 25 push-ups. He's gonna do 30 tomorrow, but me, I can only do 10 push-ups. So I'm only gonna do 15 tomorrow, right? Um okay, so the recursive rules can't be used to find a, a term directly because you'd have to know what the first term or the starting term or any previous terms are, okay? So that's the idea behind recursive rules. So for you to be able to define any term, you'd have to know one or more previous terms, okay? Now, anytime you have a recursive rule, they will give it to you, okay? So, um, like in this case, in example number one, it says your, your actual, like, um, rule is right here. It's this f of n minus 1 plus 10 is what it means. And what it's saying is it gives you the starting term of 4, okay? So, um, just really quickly, this n minus 1 thing, oops. I'll just make it a text box. So n minus 1 is another way of saying previous term. OK? So if you see like n my f of n minus 1 plus 10, what that's saying is take the previous term and add 10 to it, OK? Okay. Take previous term that's what n minus one like stands for in this case. Okay. And that's a little bit different than like what we've done in the past where it's just like you input a number, you get an answer, input output. This recursivity thing means I've got to know what my previous term is first. Okay, so let's take a look down here. 
All right, so I've got f of n is f of n minus 1 plus 10, which means the previous term plus 10. Okay, now my first term, I gave it to you, is 4. So what does that make the next term? 14. Yep, how about the one after that? Um, previous 24. term plus 10, right? So my previous term was 14. Plus 10, I get 24. How about the fourth term? I'm going to do whatever my third term was, plus 10, and I get? 34. Yeah, 34. Just like that, OK? All right, so let's go back to our push-up thing real quick. Now, given like what we know about this like recursive rule thing, if our rule for Daniel and I is going to be whatever we could do yesterday, plus five push-ups, how would I actually write that rule? F and n minus one plus five. F of n minus one, which means my previous day's push-ups plus five. Right? Yeah. You nailed it. That's it. Okay. Any questions? All right, so let's do example two real quick, and then we'll be done for the day. So in example two, um, you've got a recursive rule here. It gives you the first term. The first term is three, and your rule is previous term plus two. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my f of one, which is three. That's my starting point. What's my next number going to be? Oh, I'm um, five. Why do you know it's five? Because you, you take three and add two. Right, so plus two. So then my third term is going to be five plus two. Seven. Mm -hmm. And then? Nine. Nine. Okay, just like that. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's it. We're going to do um, our next lesson is going to be on um, something called arithmetic sequences, which is sequences that involve addition or subtraction. And then the following lesson is going to be on geometric sequences, which involve multiplication. Okay. Um, again, just fancy ways of doing stuff that you've, you've already known. Okay. So um, you guys are doing a great job. We are almost done with our year, which is super, super exciting. Yay. Just keep pushing, keep working hard. You guys are doing great. Um, all right, and with that, I will uh, I will flip it over to Daniel for his shout out for this lesson. Daniel, you got a shout out for us? Yes, it's where is okay, cool. So I'm gonna shout out to somebody who says that she doesn't get a shout out. So shout out to Samantha. How about Kristen? You got a shout out for us? Yeah. So shout out to Isabel, Luca, um, Avery. Felipe, Juan, and anybody else in my seventh period. That also includes Samantha. Wow, look at that. Samantha just got two shout outs. Somebody who never gets wow. a shout out. It's pretty good. All right, y'all. See you next time.